Hello guys, I'm Katmalk and I'm back with another art box to show you. Today I will open September's creative art box and this is the second time I'm opening one of these. So you can check out the first one that I made if you would like a more full scale review of the box itself. I will leave a link to it here somewhere. So this is an art supply subscription box and you can get one sent home to you every month with new delicious art supplies in it. This time Creative Art Box sent me their premium box which as you can see is a little larger than the basic one that I got last time. So I hope there are some nice stuff in there. Also giveaway time! I'm about to hit 25,000 followers on Instagram soon, I hope, it's crazy. And Creative Art Box were kind enough to support a 25k giveaway where you can win the September Premium Creative Art Box which is this one that I'm gonna open today. So just head over and follow me on Instagram so you won't miss out on the giveaway whenever that will happen. It will happen soon, I hope. So enough talking, let's open the box. So the first thing is this little paper note with a list of all the materials that's inside and it seems to be a lot this time and also information on how to use them. Then next is a little package wrapped in this nice green paper and inside we have a bunch of pastels and charcoal crayons. Some of them are a little broken it seems like but it says in the info card that that might happen in the shipping and that they will be good to use anyway. So we we have one white, kind of, two browns and two blacks, quite dirty and messy. A little sticker. And something I thought was very interesting, sandpaper. So this is apparently so you can sharpen your crayons and pastels and charcoal, materials that you can't sharpen with a regular pencil sharpener. Then you just rub it on the sandpaper instead. Then we have something big and as you may have guessed already, it's a mannequin. It's a wooden person, a female in this case, that you can pose in any way you like and use as help and reference when drawing people. It is a little stiff but it can help when learning the human shapes. Next we have a solid lead pencil from Koi Noor. I'm still not sure if I pronounced that right or not. I have a few of these and they are really nice to hold and to work with. And it's supposed to last longer than a regular pencil. A Prismacolor colorless blender pencil that you can blend and smooth color pencils with. I didn't knew it worked with graphite as well so that will be very interesting to see how that works. Then we have a bunch of graphite pencils from Reeves in different softnesses. I haven't tried pencils from this brand before, but I guess they will act and behave just as any normal pencils would do. Few paper blending sticks and you can use them to smooth and smudge graphite or pastels and such. And the shorter one is apparently called Tortillion, if I pronounce that right. And it looks a little rougher than the other one. Then we have a not so white regular eraser, those pastels are everywhere, and a kneaded eraser that you can shape in any way you like, like a clay kind of. The last supply in the box is this little plastic pencil sharpener. So here are all the supplies and stuff inside September's box. It is quite a few, looks good. The only thing I think is a little, little, little disappointing are the Prismacolor colors blender pencil and the kneaded eraser and also the paper blending stick. It is the exact same thing as I got in the last box. I also got the pencil sharpener but I guess it is good to get in a box like this since there are a lot of pencils to sharpen. But we got the whole mannequin and a bunch of pencils. So to be totally honest, I am not that fond of these kinds of materials like dry pastels and charcoals and such. I think they are messy and you get charcoal dust everywhere. If you usually work with white paper that you want to stay white, dry pastels isn't great to keep around your workspace. However, I always think it's fun to try out new supplies, so of course I'm gonna try to make something with these. 
and I actually liked them. I didn't use the graphite pencils that much though, since I've got so many graphite pencils in different softnesses and used them in many videos, it feels like, so it gets kind of repetitive. But I used the pastel and charcoal a lot, since they are quite new to me, and I liked the way you could blend and smooth out the colors, so I had a lot of fun using them. So about the drawing, when I saw the red brownish and black and white colors, I came to think about a red panda. It was the perfect colors I thought, so I first sketched with a Koi Noor solid lead pencil and then I just went loose with the pastels. I'm using a toned paper since I wanted the white pastel to show more. And yeah, maybe I should have made a human since I got the mannequin and I thought I would do another sketch of a person using the mannequin as a reference but yeah, I ran out of time because of another project so you will only get the cute panda today. I hope that's okay. Something I noticed when trying out the Prismacolor blender pencil on top of the graphite in the beginning, it kind of darkened the color a little or made the graphite less shiny, almost a bit charcoal looking actually. It gave the graphite a nice effect anyway. I must also say that the little pencil sharpener wasn't that good really, plastic sharpeners aren't as good as the metal ones. The Reeves pencils were okay I think, they felt as good as any other graphite pencils I've tried. So I'm smudging and blending and adding layers. On larger areas these pastels are great I think, but when getting to the smaller ones like the eyes they are a little clumsy. Maybe I could have tried to sharpen the charcoal crayon with the sandpaper, but I was a little afraid that I would get charcoal everywhere. I will put a clip of trying out the sandpaper at the end of the video so you will see how it works. The charcoal and the pastel was actually quite easy to erase, I noticed, and I used a kneaded eraser to create highlights in the eyes and such. It's really nice to use on the smaller areas. The larger eraser worked fine too, I just wish it was wrapped with some kind of paper so it wasn't so dirty. I used the paper blending sticks a little, but I used my fingers more, which I thought was way more fun. For smaller details, the blending sticks works great, and the tortillion one, yeah, the shorter one of the blending sticks, was good for larger areas too. And I liked the way you could layer the pastel, and that the white pastel worked fine on top of the darker colors. So I did enjoy this box, especially the pastel and charcoal. It felt like everything was of good quality and that there was a decent amount of materials in the box, even if some of them had already appeared in previous boxes. I personally think it is a little boring with the graphite pencils since I've gotten so many sets of them already, but they are probably perfect for anyone that doesn't have a good set of pencils, so yeah, I would recommend them. I love the way this turned out, and even if it was messy and dirty, I enjoyed working with the pastels and graphite. I would definitely consider trying out more pastels, but maybe I should find a separate working area for that first. I hope you liked this drawing too and this video. Leave a like and a comment if you did, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out the giveaway over at my Instagram, I'm Catbug there as well, and you can win a box like this. Thank you so much for watching and keep drawing my happy cats, bye!